Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discovering something else about our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Another recent paper came out not so long ago suggesting something unusual in one of the galactic arms of our galaxy. One of the arms in the Milky Way seems to have some kind of a break, a spiral arm break. Something that was very recently discovered using the new data from the Gaia telescope. Something that until now was not actually known and something that was not suspected. But it's not unusual and I wanted to explain why, while also explaining some of the other relevant details about this particular paper and about the study. But first of all, it's important to understand that it's actually kind of difficult for us to see what our galaxy looks like, mostly because we're located inside of it, pretty deep inside of it. And one of the main difficulties in trying to understand what the galaxy looks like is actually establishing distances to various objects. For example, we might be able to see certain density of stars in a region somewhere, but we don't really know how far away those stars are from one another. But because of ESA's Gaia telescope, in the last few years more and more data came out and became available to try to figure out a lot of these different structures, mostly because it discovered extremely precise distances to billions of different objects out there. And because of this, we now have quite a lot of data to start figuring out what the actual galaxy looks like and what some of the parts of the galaxy might represent. This is why a lot of different discoveries in regards to the structure of the galaxy, including one of the recent ones that should be popping up somewhere right there at some point, have essentially been made after Gaia mission became operational. And so this recent study used the data from the Gaia telescope, combining it with the infrared data from the Spitzer telescope. The telescope responsible for creating what's known as the Glimpse Survey, also known as the Galactic Legacy Infrared Midplane Survey Extraordinaire. The survey and the telescope perfect for studying the galactic arms. And there's a really important reason for that. If you were to look at a typical galactic arm, a typical galactic arm would contain an overdensity of various star-forming gas clouds and a lot of different young stars, producing a lot of infrared radiation. As a matter of fact, most of the infrared radiation would be coming from the galactic arms. And so by using the infrared survey, it would be much easier to establish where the galactic arms are located and to study their structure and to study their shape. And to date, the most accurate representation using the data from these telescopes makes the galaxy look something like this. This is from NASA and JPL lab, with our sun located somewhere right here, right between two major galactic arms, but inside a smaller galactic arm. But at the moment, this is still a relatively rough representation. In the last few years, some major discoveries have already suggested that, for example, our galaxy could be wobbling and producing all sorts of wave-like shapes, while also not really being flat, but instead being somewhat warped. We've also recently discovered at least one minor arm on the outskirts of the galaxy, and there are probably a lot of these arms pretty much all over the place. So even though the galaxy seems to possess four major arms, there could be a lot of smaller ones that have still not been found. But in this paper, the scientists decided to focus on one of the major arms that's essentially closest to us, the Sagittarius arm. So essentially this arm that kind of goes right here, and the one that astronomers often refer to as Sagittarius Carina arm, because it's actually technically two arms. It starts as Sagittarius arm, then it sort of disappears and becomes Carina arm. And today it's believed to be one of the most pronounced arms in our galaxy, with a tremendous amount of young stars, giant molecular clouds, and a lot of beautiful and easily visible in infrared regions that allow us to study this arm with a lot of detail. And because generally young stars and a lot of nebular clouds usually align with the location of these galactic arms, by precisely measuring the distances to those nebula, it's thus possible to sort of start mapping the location of various arms in a galaxy. And in this case, Spitzer Telescope combined with Gaia Telescope create a perfect combination to study all of this. And so when they put all of this data together, they did discover something unusual inside the arm itself. So normally when you look at a typical galactic arm, the so-called angle of pitch is about 12 degrees. Mathematically speaking, it refers to the angle that can be visualized this way. So this angle right here in the galactic arm in our galaxy is believed to be approximately 12 degrees. But the analysis of several objects, such as nebular clouds, present in the Sagittarius arm, established another object with an angle of about 60 degrees. A collection of young stars, collection of nebular clouds, forming something that's about 3000 light years in length. Something that essentially crosses the arm itself, making it stick out quite dramatically if you were to look at it from the top. With this being the first major structure inside the galactic arm, 
that has such a dramatic different orientation compared to everything else around it. And interestingly enough, a lot of super famous nebula seem to be part of this structure. For example, the very famous Eagle Nebula, that's actually famous for this right here, that contains the famous pillars of creation, is apparently inside the structure. With the other famous objects being the Omega Nebula, the Trifid Nebula, and lastly, the Lagoon Nebula that you see right here. With all four nebula being part of this unusual formation. But I guess the question is, is this something completely unexplainable, or is this something that was actually expected? And the answer seems to be the latter. This seems to be what the scientists often refer to as the feathers or the spurs of a galactic arm. And many such spurs have been discovered in other galaxies. The majority of spiral galaxies that have galactic arms usually have them straight like you see right here. But approximately 30% of all galaxies discovered tend to have somewhat unequal and somewhat feathery looking spirals. These are known as the flocculent spirals. And so approximately 30% of all galaxies out there that have spiral arms have flocculent spiral arms. They have these unusual feather-like formations. The word flocculent in this case just means fluffy. So essentially they have spiral arms that are somewhat discontinuous and somewhat broken up in places. With the galaxy known as NGC 2841 being the most commonly used example. And because so many of them seem to have these unusual formations, for many many decades now the scientists were kind of wondering, well, is our galaxy part of the majority that has relatively straight arms, or is our galaxy also somewhat flocculent? Does it have these fluffy feather-like formations? And it looks like, according to the study right here, the answer is that it does seem to have these flocculent formations. The arms are not entirely straight, they seem to have breaks, and they seem to have these feathers. With the first feather discovered so far being this unusual formation that currently is referred to as the far 3 kiloparsec arm. And so in reality our galaxy might actually resemble something like this more so than something like this, at least to some extent. It does seem to contain these feathers and they do seem to break some of the arms. Or okay, the reality is that there's at least one of these feathers, but chances are that there are a lot more of them out there. And overall it seems to be a pretty interesting structure. It contains approximately 25 different star forming regions or star forming nebula, but also seems to be spinning with the rest of the galaxy at exactly the same speed as everything around it. So it's definitely part of the galaxy and it's definitely not something unusual created by some unusual collision. And if your next question is, but how was it created? The answer to that is that, well, at the moment, nobody really understands how these structures are made. Okay, so there are at least some models, such as this one right here, the model known as the Stochastic Self-Propagating Star Formation, that kind of tries to explain the formation of these structures, but the more realistic answer in this case is that it's still being debated and it's still not entirely well understood. And so to answer how this is created, I guess we're gonna have to wait a few years until someone figures this out and until someone proves this definitively. And by the way, there's at least one more paper I'm going to post in the description that goes on a very detailed investigation and analysis of a lot of different feathers located in a lot of different galaxies, with some of these galaxies containing dozens and even hundreds of these feather-like formations. So definitely something that exists in a lot of other galaxies out there. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.